Trisha Paytas is one of the most openly anti-Semitic creators on YouTube. The things Trisha has said about Jewish people are the types of things that would get most people banned for spreading alt-right propaganda, but because she's Trisha, she was allowed to spread her anti-Semitic rhetoric on one of the most popular podcasts on the internet, Frenemies, last year. Over the years, she has consistently spread actual Nazi rhetoric. Even openly racist people like Steven Crowder haven't spread the type of horrible shit about Jewish people that Trisha has. Hitler can't be all bad if he had this big following. But somehow she's been able to convince many people that it's not that serious by constantly playing dumb. You just found out about the Holocaust? I had no idea. Um, I really love movies and books about the Holocaust. Contradicting herself. Like, what's the stereotype about Jews? Like, my cheap Jew boyfriend with a big nose. I don't say that. Jewish people are cheap. I like the stereotypes of, like, their noses. And victimizing herself whenever she gets called out. When you make those statements of being an anti-Semite, it's really damaging. Apparently, being criticized for her racist actions is incredibly damaging to Trisha, and we all need to stop talking about her. Please stop talking about me. Trisha claims that if anyone ever asked her to stop talking about them, she absolutely would. If someone asked me ever, even in my worst days on YouTube, to stop talking about them, I would cease immediately. This is complete bullshit. In Frenemies episode 10, Charlie D'Amelio, a 16-year-old, asked Trisha to stop attacking her. I'm just gonna say, Trisha Paytas, like this is not just, you have been completely rude to me multiple times. Just like, please stop talking about me. And this is how Trisha responded. You are boring, you don't dance well. Like I'm not trying to be a hater, I'm allowed to have an opinion. When you have 100 million followers, brand deals with Duncan, all this money, good for you. Well, but don't expect people to not like critique your actions. That's, that's the limelight. So in Trisha's mind, when a 16 year old asks her to stop calling her out, Trisha won't because she should be able to critique Charlie's actions. But we shouldn't be able to critique Trisha, a 33-year-old's racist actions because the hate is just too much and it's just so incredibly damaging to her. She even tells Charlie to suck it up because everyone on the internet deals with criticism. My, here's my, my thing, like, suck it up. Well, Trisha, it's time for you to take your own advice. When you get called out for being anti-Semitic, you need to suck it the fuck up because the people who are actually hurt when you're racist are the Jewish people whose people actually experience genocide, not your fragile white ass who can't handle being called out for your racist actions. And according to your own words, you actually agree with me that I should be able to criticize you. Never let influencers or anyone tell you to not comment, not give your opinions, your beliefs, your thoughts. Don't let anyone tell you not to call someone out if you think someone's in the wrong. <laughs> But don't let anyone ever silence you. You're allowed to have your opinions. And when people put themselves online, they have to accept other people's criticism, critiques, and opinions. I think by now most people on the internet are aware that Trisha is an abusive, manipulative, racist, pathological liar, but I think a lot of people aren't aware just how deeply anti-Semitic Trisha actually is. I'm not someone who likes to be hyperbolic, but I cannot stress enough that the things Trisha has said about Jewish people are the exact same things that Nazis say on alt-right message boards like like Stormfront. I think a lot of people are only aware of some of the more subtly anti-Semitic things Trisha has said, like calling her lunch her Jew lunch. Now, Trisha, <laughs> you know you can't, you says raiding my Jew lunch. Uh huh. I can tell you with on with 100% certainty, you cannot say that, it's offensive. In this video, I'm mostly not going to be focusing on how Trisha fetishizes Jewish people, something she has both denied doing and openly admitted to doing. It's weird how you fetishize it's Jewish people. It's not fetishizing. Mm. I just like to fetishize anybody Israeli now. I'm also mostly not going to focus on her cultural appropriation of Jewish culture, something she calls cultural appreciation. This is kind of like cultural appropriation, isn't it? Appreciation. 
Trisha has built her entire career around cultural appropriation, so criticizing her for this feels kinda redundant at this point. No, I'm gonna be focusing on the things that she has said that are directly in line with the messaging of the Nazi party. In my opinion, there are two options for who Trisha really is. Either she is just a troll who uses anti-Semitism to stir up controversy and grow her platform, or she's an actual covert Nazi. Whichever one it is, she has unquestionably used anti-Semitism for her own personal gain, and I think she is far beyond being allowed any sort of redemption by crying on her kitchen floor and making an apology video filled with self-victimization and excuses. Trisha has said herself that it's impossible to cancel her because you can't cancel someone who only cares about making money. I don't believe that people can be canceled, you have to go away to be canceled, but you know, I've definitely trolled for money. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely have said like, whatever, Hitler's like, whatever, you know what I mean? People just won't forgive me and that's fine. I don't expect it. I make a ton of money, so it's fine. So in this video, I know I won't cancel Trisha Paytas, but hopefully by debunking her anti-Semitic rhetoric, I can arm you with the tools to stop letting anti-Semites like her gain this sort of platform to spread their hateful messages ever again. I just want to quickly preface this video by saying that Ethan Klein is in no way perfect. I definitely disagree with some of the things he said in the past about fat people, trans people, and some of the racist jokes he's made, but in my opinion, Trisha Paytas is on a whole different level. Ethan has never physically abused his partner or spread actual Nazi propaganda or lied over and over and over again. So to any Trisha fans who say, well, Ethan is just as bad as Trisha, you're a fucking idiot. Now, it is time to prove how Trisha Paytas legitimately hates Jewish people. First, I think it would be good to establish how we can't believe anything that Trisha says. In Frenemies Episode 4, Trisha claims that she just learned how bad the Holocaust was and that she had no idea that millions of Jews were killed by being tricked into the showers. You just found out about the Holocaust? I had no idea that they like tricked them into going to showers and like killed millions of them that way. This is a complete lie. Back in 2011, in a video titled 20 Things You Didn't Know About Me, Trisha says that she loves movies and books about the Holocaust. Um, I really love movies and books about the Holocaust. In this video, she recommends the movie The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. It's crazy, it's like that boy in the striped pajamas. I mean, stuff like that is just like, it takes me to other worlds. Spoiler alert, the final scene in the movie The Boy in the Striped Pajamas shows Jewish people being tricked into the showers. Yet somehow, nine years later, Trisha is claiming that she never knew about how they were tricked into the showers. I had no idea. In another video Trisha uploaded called My Thoughts on Hitler, which we will dive more into later, she says, Hitler killed a bunch of Jews. That's a fact. So Hitler killed a bunch of Jews. That's a fact. So years ago, she knew that Jews were tricked into the shower and she knew that Hitler killed a bunch of Jews. So what motivation could she possibly have to directly lie to a Jewish man about her knowledge of the Holocaust and pretend like she didn't know what Hitler did that was so bad? Well, what did Hitler do that was so bad? My opinion is Trisha plays up this persona of ignorance to give herself plausible deniability whenever she gets called out on the hateful things that she says. If you ever call her out for saying something racist or tell her how fucked up it is to pretend like you don't know how bad Hitler was, she'll just respond by saying, Oh, I had no idea. And most people believe her because Trisha has cultivated this image of herself that she's much more stupid than she actually is. You may be surprised to find out that Trisha is actually a geneticist and a computer programmer. 
I was a genetics major and a physical anthropology minor in college. I mean, I write computer programs. I, I feel like I'm so talented. But when Trisha moved to LA, she realized that she could find success by pretending to be an extremely stereotypical blonde bimbo. By playing into misogynistic stereotypes about how dumb blonde women are, she was able to troll her way to success. She's pretended like she doesn't know that dogs have brains. I tweeted, do dogs have brains? Because I like seriously wanted to know. Pretended she thinks that gravity was invented. What do you mean that we don't need gravity? What if it was never invented? And pretended like she doesn't know what climate change is. Do That's you believe that climate change is is the most urgent is uh, time bomb that we need to face immediately and and boldly? I have no idea what that is. The idea that a geneticist wouldn't know that dogs have brains or understand basic scientific concepts like gravity or climate change is completely ludicrous. And in case you still have doubts, in 2013 she made a video called Global Warming is a Hoax. Global Warming is a Hoax. So in 2020, claiming that she doesn't know what climate change is, I have no idea what that is, was another blatant lie. In my opinion, her constantly playing dumb highlights the insidious truth that whenever she pushes an anti-Semitic stereotype, she knows exactly what she's doing. Trisha openly admitted on a podcast with Shane Dawson that most of the things she says on YouTube are lies. Like my personal life is not my real personal life on YouTube. Like I make up a personal life on YouTube. I have a fake life on YouTube and then I have like a real life. But while Trisha was on Frenemies, she was trying to push this narrative that while in the past she used to lie, now she doesn't lie anymore. I just am asking because I know people are gonna be like, she admits she's a pathological liar and you can't trust anything she says. Um, like when I was younger, but I, I'm not now, I don't lie. I make a really conscious effort to I like believe not. everything you say. I don't think you're a liar. And in the past she used to make trolling videos and be problematic, but now she doesn't troll anymore and she's trying to not be problematic. I said offensive things way in my past that will haunt me forever, you know what I mean? Like, I know I do stuff that's problematic, but that was when I was in my 20s, you know, I'm 32 and I'm trying to like do better. But this is complete and utter bullshit because she constantly lied while she was on Frenemies. You just found out about the Holocaust? I had no idea. And some of the most harmful things Trisha has ever said about Jewish people were said on Frenemies. Now that we've established that Trisha is a liar, let's chronicle all of the hateful things that she has said about Jewish people. Let's start with her just straight up insulting them. Trisha has called Jewish men assholes. They're like assholes. Has said Jews are traditionally unattractive. Jews are traditionally unattractive. Has called Jews cheap. Jewish people are cheap. And has called Ethan money hungry with absolutely no evidence. I know you're all about the money and not just because you're Jewish. Trisha often tries to mask her hateful statements by using a technique called love bombing. This is a technique often used by abusive narcissists where they overcompensate by repeatedly saying how much they love someone to deflect from their abusive behavior towards that person. Trisha uses this technique of love bombing whenever she talks about Jewish people. The stereotypes you make about Jews feed into anti-Semitism. But it's my love for them. I love the stereotypes of Jewish people. Yeah, this is why I love Jewish men. They have like a sensitive side to them at the end of the day. Hey, no, I, I know, just love I know. Jewish men so much. Like that's I all know. I go for. She has repeated over and over and over again how much she loves Jewish people and how they're so hot. It's like they're so hot. Well, Trisha, do you think they're hot or do you think they're unattractive? Jews are traditionally unattractive. Because you can't think both. This is how love bombing works. As long as someone keeps showering love and affection onto their partner, they think it will distract from the times that they insult and degrade them. Imagine if your partner called you a cheap, unattractive asshole. Cheap, unattractive asshole. And then when you call them out for how much them saying this hurt you, they responded by saying, oh, but baby, I love you so much. I would never hurt you. This is exactly what Trisha does with Jewish people. 
Trisha also has a strange obsession with only wanting to date racially pure Jewish people. I want- so You want Jewish purity. I need, yeah. She has said that American Jews aren't real Jews. It's uh, the American Jews that get angry, which aren't real Jews. And she said that her ex-boyfriend tricked her because he wasn't a full Jew because only his mother was Jewish. First of all, he tricked me. I thought he was a full Jew. And then he's like, I actually well, think my mom's only Jewish. I'm like, ah. Yeah, that's full Jew. Okay, but his dad's like Catholic. As Ethan explains, as long as someone's mother is Jewish, they are considered a full Jew by Jewish people. But Trisha needs both of his parents to be Jewish because she only wants the most genetically pure Jewish person, I guess. As a geneticist herself, Trisha should know that this way of thinking is extremely racist and is eugenics. And seeking racial purity is the type of thing a certain someone is known for. Even if you're not seeking white racial purity like Hitler, seeking Jewish racial purity is just as fucked up and racist. And even if this is just Trisha trolling, spreading eugenics is never okay. For some reason, Trisha thinks it's okay to degrade and insult American Jews as long as she compliments her boyfriend Moses for being a real Jew from the homeland, Israel. Seriously, American Jewish men have like really little penises and they're cheap. No. I do feel that way because I always dated Jewish men, but American Jewish. So now when I met you, I was like, ooh, we got a real one from the well, homeland. We know like However, Trisha has also insulted Israel. This is why we're not all equal. Okay, why, why, why don't you just go to... Okay, We're not if, judgmentally if you, here. I mean, there's a reason people leave Israel. They don't stay there. So Trisha thinks that American Jews aren't real Jews and that they're cheap and have small dicks, but she also thinks that America is superior to Israel and that everyone wants to leave Israel. Guess what, Trisha? If you simultaneously insult both American Jews and Israeli Jews, you just might be an actual anti-Semite. And let me repeat that one more time. She said that America is superior to Israel. That is just one step removed from saying white people are superior to Jewish people. If you don't want people to think that you're a white supremacist, you probably shouldn't say that your country is superior to Israel. Because you know who else thought that their country was superior to Israel? In my opinion, Trisha probably doesn't actually care whether Jews are American or Israeli or if they're genetically pure enough. She's just looking for excuses to insult Jewish people. On the podcast, Trisha also used claiming that she was planning to convert to Judaism as another way to deflect from criticism against her. Yes. She's not Jewish. I'm converting. Not that I care, but she's not. Okay, well, I'm on my way to convert. My boyfriend's an Israeli Jew. At one point, her and Moses broke up briefly, and when this happened, Happened, she said that she was done with Judaism. I'm over yeah. it. So. Why, what, what happened? Why are you over it? I think because I'm just taking a little break from my Jewish boyfriend. So you, so you leave the man, you leave the religion? I, I think so. If you're willing to throw away your religious beliefs just because you stopped dating someone, it seems to me like you probably never actually had those religious beliefs and this was all just an act to create controversy and capitalize off of Jewish people. Trisha has recently admitted that she's given up on trying to convert to Judaism, so I think that my hypothesis is probably correct. Converting to Judaism is kind of like denying Jesus as my savior, like I do like Jesus is my savior. In my opinion, none of this was ever about her actual religious beliefs or her actual sexual preferences. She was always just looking for opportunities to dehumanize Jewish people. In the very first episode of Frenemies, she says that she sees Moses as her Middle Eastern toy. He's like a toy. It's like, oh, I got a Middle Eastern, you know? <sighs> This is the problem with fetishizing other races. It's not that you like their race. Because I like Jewish people? Well, because, Nobody hates no, that? The problem is that fetishizing them dehumanizes them. When you reduce a person to only focusing on your sexual attraction to that person, you start seeing them as a toy instead of as a human being. He's like a toy. It's like, oh, I got a Middle Eastern, you know? And when you don't see someone as a human being, you're likely to start reducing them to racist stereotypes. I'm 
American Jewish men have like really little penises and they're cheap. And when you reduce people to racist stereotypes, you're more likely to start seeing yourself as superior to them. This is why we're not all equal. <clears throat> okay, why, why don't you just go to- superior. And thinking you're superior to other races leads you to abusing them. And on the podcast, Trisha openly admitted to physically assaulting Moses. Ethan brought it up on the podcast that makes me look like I'm a domestic abuse, like I'm a, I'm a person that hits my partner. And oh. like that was uh. out in the open. And we even said, Moses, like, stop, cut it. We're like, don't put that in the thing. What does he do? He puts it in the fucking thing. Wait, it was never pri it was never fucking public. Well, maybe you shouldn't hit him. I agree, but that is something that is so fucking personal that you said, and we're like, please edit it out. But somehow, Trisha, the queen of self-victimization, was able to make Ethan out to be the bad guy because he exposed her for being an abuser, rather than her being the bad one for being an abuser. Trisha tried to downplay her abuse towards Moses. I did not punch him. You said that's why you broke up with me because I punched you? I went like this. Okay. And he's frail. But she hit him hard enough to leave serious bruising. This should have been the end of her career, but if people like Chris Brown are any proof, that's not how fame works. The fact that Trisha admitted to physically assaulting Moses and basically no one cared is frankly disgusting to me. Everyone was totally on board with Trisha trying to cancel David Dobrik because David was involved with his friend assaulting girls but no one tried to cancel Trisha for herself assaulting Moses. Why is that? In general, I like Ethan, but in my opinion, the second he found out that Trisha physically assaulted his brother-in-law, he should have ended the podcast and never spoken to her again. Next, let's focus on the anti-Semitic messages and conspiracy theories that Trisha has spread that are directly in line with the messages of the Nazi party. Years ago, Trisha posted a video called My Thoughts on Hitler. This entire video was dedicated to her giving excuses for why she thinks Hitler wasn't that bad. Hitler can't be all bad if he had this big following. Fact, Germany got out of depression when he came into leadership. Fact, the economy boomed in Germany. Fact, Germany had this sort of like uh, rally again, like okay, we're gonna we're gonna overcome, we're gonna we're gonna be one, we're gonna be united. In my opinion, this is obviously one of the videos Trisha would consider her trolling videos, where she says the most outrageous shit possible to create controversy and get views. She plays dumb and pretends to know nothing about history, and even pretends to think that we're currently in a World War III. Self-admittedly, I was terrible at history. I didn't really care about history at the time, that we had to learn it through school. I didn't even know World War II came after World War I. I knew nothing about World War III. However, as we previously established, one of Trisha's favorite hobbies at this time was reading literature about the Holocaust. And someone who knows nothing about history wouldn't know that Hitler caused Germany's economy to grow during World War II. And by the way, some of the main reasons that the economy grew under Hitler were because he forced every German citizen to work or be thrown into concentration camps, forced them to work insanely long hours, and forced 5 million people, primarily Jews, into slave labor. So obviously the argument that Hitler wasn't that bad because he helped the economy is ridiculous. Even if Trisha didn't actually mean what she was saying because she was just trolling, someone with her extensive knowledge of the Holocaust should have known that spreading this type of Nazi propaganda is extremely dangerous even if you're just trolling. And the point of her trolling videos were to convince people that she was actually serious. It's not like this was some sort of comedy act where you know that the person is clearly telling a joke. She wanted people to actually think that she was serious about spreading Nazi propaganda. Next, Trisha said on Frenemies that Jews are in the upper echelon of the world. It's weird how you fetishize it's Jewish people. It's not fetishizing. It is totally to be in the upper echelon of the world. Now, she didn't just say Jews are rich. She said they're in the upper echelon. The phrase upper echelon is the kind of thing that Nazis say. Your average person wouldn't use the phrase upper echelon unless they had been exposed to actual Nazi conspiracy theories. 
The conspiracy theory that Jews are in the upper echelon of the world and that they control all of the world's finances was first promoted in an anti-Semitic text called Protocols of the Elders of Zion. This conspiracy theory that Jewish people are greedy and that they steal money and hoard wealth I know you're all about the money and not just because you're a Jewish is a complete myth and it has been used as one of the main justifications for genocide against Jewish people. Trisha seems to think it's okay to spread this conspiracy theory because she sees it as a positive thing to be in the upper echelon of society. However, Trisha should know that saying something racist doesn't suddenly become okay just because you say it in a positive way. If someone says, I love that black people are violent criminals, it doesn't matter if you say you love it, you still just promoted a racist stereotype that leads to hatred against black people. Trisha said that she wants Jewish children because they'll be in the upper echelon of society, but she can't even keep her story straight on if she does or doesn't want Jewish children. You know what? I would say normally yes, but I think they shouldn't be because I think too many people are Jewish here in LA. I think we need some to stand out a little more. They should be non-Jewish. Exactly. Trisha said that she doesn't want Jewish children because there are too many Jewish people in LA. So. Which is it, Trisha? Do you want Jewish children because you want them to run the upper echelon of society, or do you not want Jewish children because you want there to be less Jews? Whichever one it is, it's horribly anti-Semitic. I honestly have no idea whether or not Trisha actually does or doesn't want Jewish children. She's just using talking about children as an excuse to promote anti-Semitism. Another common Nazi conspiracy theory that Trisha has repeated multiple times is the idea that the Jews killed Jesus. Jewish people killed Jesus is a fact, is what I'm saying. Jesus was a Jew, but the Jews killed Jesus, so. This conspiracy theory comes from a sect of Catholicism called Radical Traditionalist Catholicism. They use the claim that the Jews killed Jesus to justify hatred towards Jewish people. According to the Bible, the Roman government killed Jesus, not the Jews. And even if according to the Bible certain specific Jewish people were involved in causing Jesus to be crucified, using this as a justification to hate Jews for centuries is conspiratorial nonsense. One of the most famous radical traditionalist Catholics is Mel Gibson, who famously said, the Jews are responsible for all the wars in the world. On the H3 podcast, Ethan is well aware that the conspiracy theory that the Jews killed Jesus is anti-Semitic propaganda that only people like Mel Gibson believe. The Jews killed Jesus? That's not, that's, that's like that's, propaganda. And I think that only people <laughs> like Mel Gibson actually believe that. Mel Gibson also owns a radical traditionalist Catholic church near Los Angeles. And you want to know who used to attend that church? Trisha Paytas. I know Mel Gibson. I used to go to his church in Malibu. Yeah, you he's that semi You have his number? I used to. What? Yeah. Over the years, one of the people Trisha has always been obsessed with is Mel Gibson. In 2010, she released a song called My Love Song to Mel Gibson, which is just brilliant. The song is for Mel Gibson, who I love more than anything. My favorite line from the song is, through all this controversy, domestic abuse allegedly, I still want you. Through all this controversy, domestic abuse allegedly, I still want you. It makes a lot of sense that Trisha would still want someone after they commit domestic abuse because she has also committed domestic abuse. She also made another video called I Will Save Mel Gibson, where she's wearing a shirt with the quote, you should just smile and blow me on it, which is a quote from when Mel Gibson was verbally abusing his partner. In 2014, Trisha tweeted, Mel Gibson has a tiny penis, which might imply that she eventually ended up having sex with this anti-Semitic domestic abuser. Trisha likes to say that everything she said in these old videos was just trolling. Well, if it was just trolling, then why would you choose to go to Mel Gibson's church, become friends with him, and possibly sleep with him? If someone makes a trolling video saying that they're in 
love with an anti-Semitic domestic abuser, and then they proceed to actually become close with that anti-Semitic domestic abuser, then the trolling video wasn't actually trolling. The entire point of trolling is that you don't actually mean what you're saying. So whenever Trisha says, I was just trolling, I honestly do not believe her. I think she just uses this as an excuse to deflect blame from the hateful things that she said. Trisha herself has always been a very conservative Catholic. She even used to run a channel called The Catholic Vlogger, which was dedicated to her trying to convert people to Catholicism. Now, obviously most Catholics aren't anti-Semitic, but the fact that Trisha chose to attend the radical Catholic church of a well-known anti-Semite, and then she herself has been going around spreading the anti-Semitic conspiracy theories of these radical Catholics for years is a massive red flag. Trisha's father is also a very conservative Catholic, and in the podcast that Trisha did with Shane Dawson, she says that the inspiration for many of her trolling videos would come from offensive things her father would tell her. Because my dad says things that would offend a ton of people, so I just like started <laughs> repeating whatever my dad would say. So did Trisha learn these anti-Semitic conspiracy theories from her father? Did she learn them during her time with Mel Gibson? All we can really do is speculate, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter where she learned them from because Trisha needs to take responsibility for her own actions. Spreading Nazi propaganda like this to millions of people does irreparable harm to Jewish people. Impressionable viewers of Trisha's content might say to themselves, hmm, I wonder what Trisha meant by saying that Jews are in the upper echelon of society. Well, if they go on the internet and search for the answer to that question, the place where they will find the answer is Nazi message boards. And before you know it, you have helped radicalize someone into being a Nazi. People in the alt-right love to use the excuse, I was just trolling, when they get called out for their anti-Semitism. Trisha, saying you were just trolling doesn't cut it. If you contribute to the radicalization of Nazis, you are responsible. You don't get to say, what did Hitler do that was so bad, and then play dumb when you get called out. If you don't think Hitler was that bad, own that shit. Trisha is incredibly manipulative and incredibly good at shifting blame and deflecting and playing dumb and claiming she was just trolling or joking, but... I have compiled all of the things Trisha has said about Jewish people into one long quote. Listen to this and tell me if it's something you would expect to hear from someone like Trisha or if it's something you would expect to read on a Nazi message board. Jews are cheap, sneaky, unattractive assholes with big noses and small dicks. They run the upper echelon of society and they're all about money. American Jews aren't real Jews. I would never date a half Jew. If I'm going to date a Jewish man, I expect Jewish purity. I love fetishizing them and making them into my Middle Eastern toys, but honestly, I don't even want Jewish children because there are too many Jews in LA. Everyone wants to leave Israel and come here because America is superior to Israel. I love Jesus and the Jews killed Jesus. So really, what did Hitler do that was so bad. Finally, let's focus on Trisha's anti-Semitism towards Ethan in private. According to Trisha, if someone is racist behind closed doors, these are Trisha's own words, then they should be exposed and cancelled. If you're a racist, homophobic person behind closed doors, you should be exposed. Well, after Trisha left Frenemies, she posted a screenshot of a private conversation between her and Ethan where she referred to Ethan as Jewy because she thought he wasn't paying her enough of the revenue from Frenemies. Ethan called her out for how blatantly horrible and anti-Semitic this was, and she responded with one of her stupidest tweets of all time. Anti-Semitism is hostility or discrimination against Jewish people. That was obviously a joke in the text. A poor one at that. It wasn't malicious. If I discriminated against Jewish people, that would mean that I don't work with them and I sure as hell wouldn't be marrying into it. So let's break down how insanely fucking stupid this is. 
First of all, the word Jewy is a slur against Jewish people. Imagine if Trisha called a black person the N-word and they got upset at her for being racist, so she responded by saying, it's not racist to call you the N-word, it's only racist if I refuse to work with black people. I hate to keep using black people as an example, but for some reason, Trisha takes racism against black people seriously, but not racism against Jewish people. When Seth from the Vlog Squad spoke out about racism that he experienced from David Dobrik, Trisha said that people need to listen to Seth because he's a person of color and not to invalidate him when he says that the jokes made against him were racist. Seth is a person of color is feeling racist and you're gonna tell him he like, don't feel that way? That's such bullshit. But when Ethan, a Jewish person, tells Trisha that calling him Jewy as a joke was racist, she invalidates him and tells him not to feel that way. There was also a moment where Ethan and Trisha watched a clip of David Dobrik where he said he thinks it's funny to call Jewish people dirty Jews. No, I mean, like, I know teachers that would make you dirty Jew jokes. Like, because it's just, what? It's not bad. <laughs> They're just words. And this was her response. Oh my God, I think he's... I don't want to say it, but I think allegedly maybe in my head, this is not defamatory, maybe a white supremacist or something. No. White supremacist? Yeah. So Trisha thinks that David making Jew jokes means that he's a white supremacist. Trisha makes Jew jokes constantly. So by her own logic, that means that she is a white supremacist. How could you possibly try to cancel someone for making Jew jokes and call them a white supremacist? But when you make Jew jokes, everyone should just know that you're not being anti-Semitic. It makes no, no fucking sense. The audacity for her to try to cancel someone else for making Jew jokes and then victimizing herself when she gets called out for making Jew jokes is absolutely mind boggling. Oh my God, I think he's maybe a white supremacist or something. When you make those statements of being an anti-Semite, it's really damaging. In the tweet, she also says that it wasn't malicious. Well, I'll let Trisha debunk this one with her own words too. Okay, and he said there's no That's malice. That's pretty corny. To bring up race in general, there's malice behind it, a stereotype or something. So, according to Trisha's own words, when you stereotype someone based on their race, that means that there is malice behind it. But when Trisha does it, there's no malice behind it. It seems to me like Trisha is letting her true intentions slip here, because if she acknowledges that making stereotypes based on race is malicious and making Jew jokes makes you a white supremacist, then that means that she has to be admitting that she is a malicious white supremacist, right? Ugh. I doubt Trisha will ever respond to this video because I don't have enough clout for her to care, but if she did respond, I know exactly what she would say. As good as Trisha thinks she is at gaslighting and manipulation, it's actually all incredibly predictable. So here's the response video that Trisha would make to this video if she ever responded. Hi. I didn't want to have to make this video, but I am dealing with non-stop harassment. A few days ago, some irrelevant channel named like Beard or something made this video claiming that I am anti-Semitic. Honestly, this guy is obsessed with me. I think he might be like a stalker or something because he, he dug up clips from 10 years ago. How much of a freak do you have to be to dig through all of my old videos just to find clips that fit your narrative? I don't know what to do. I think I need to get a restraining order against him or something because he just won't stop. The harassment just, it never stops. What can I even say at this point? I literally just married a Jewish man. How could you claim that I am anti-Semitic when I am married to a Jewish man? I literally shove Jewish cock inside of me every night and you're saying that I am anti-Semitic. You took clips where I am clearly joking, clearly trolling, and you just spun them to fit your narrative because you want to clickbait my name and you want to get famous off of using my name will keep my name out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> you don't know how much it hurts a person to call them anti-Semitic. You don't know how much it 
hurts me. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry that in my 15 years on the internet, I haven't been perfectly politically correct at all times. I'm sorry that I haven't said all the perfect things that the woke mob wants me to say, okay? I'm sorry. This man is using his male privilege to bully me, a neurodivergent non-binary person. <laughs> Do you know how much saying things like this triggers my PTSD? Do you know how much calling me racist hurts me? You just don't care. <laughs> you just don't care. I literally have mental disabilities. I literally black out whenever I talk about Jewish people. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I said some offensive things about Jewish people. I was literally blacked out. You are literally bullying a neurodivergent non-binary person. All I want right now is to be able to enjoy my wedding in peace with my Jewish husband. But I can't because because of this constant harassment and constant bullying and constantly calling me an anti-Semite when I have proved so many times how much I love Jewish people. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. Is that what you want to hear? Will that make you happy? Will that satisfy the mob? I'm sorry. Now please, just make the harassment stop. The purpose of me making that was just to show how easy it is for Trisha to shift blame and refuse to take accountability. Mental health struggles are completely valid, but weaponizing your mental health struggles to refuse to take accountability for domestic abuse and racism isn't valid. And Trisha agrees with me. I am so sick of people using mental health as an excuse to be like a shit person or not know what's going on in the world. It's like, no, you're a shit person. Own up to it. Trisha, as much as you don't want to admit it, you have been consistently racist and done consistent harm to the Jewish community. You even had a Holocaust survivor call you out, but you refused to listen. I don't know if deep down you really do hate Jewish people or if you have just been spreading Nazi propaganda for attention, but regardless, I hope you get what you deserve. The thing you fear most. No one watching your videos, no one believing a word you say, and no one giving you any more attention. Ugh, oh, that was a doozy. This was definitely the biggest undertaking I've ever gone through, but I thought this video was worth making because I was kind of disappointed that I hadn't seen anyone on YouTube really call out how horribly racist Trisha really is. I do want to acknowledge that I am white and I don't have a perfect knowledge on history or anti-Semitism, so I deeply apologize if I made any errors in this video. I've linked a few videos from Jewish creators down below who are much more knowledgeable on the topic and went into more detail on the religious aspects of Trisha's anti-Semitism. Also, just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. I put probably around 100 hours into this video, and it can be kind of stressful to focus on these massive projects because I worry that, you know, what if I put it out and then it doesn't perform well? It just creates some financial insecurity. So anyone who wants to support me on there, that would be absolutely amazing. It definitely helps me feel more confident in making these sort of deep dive videos and not having to worry about, you know, financial stuff. Obviously, absolutely no pressure. Just having you here watching the video is enough. However, if there is one thing you could do for me that would make me literally so happy, go and block Trisha Paytas on every single social media platform. The only way to beat Trisha Paytas is to stop giving her attention. I know it can be entertaining to watch whatever outrageous shit she does next, but in my opinion, she has just done so much damage to so many different communities, so many different individuals, so it's just not worth it. So, New Year's resolution, 2022, everyone block Trisha Paytas. Another just huge thank you for sticking around till the end. I'll see you in the next one.